December, right before the holidays, which is sweet. Now, I came to Justin six years ago telling him, I want to make this movie, give me access to the Bell Media Much Music archives. And we couldn't get it done six years ago, could we, Justin? But we eventually uh, kept at it. You believed in me, appreciate you. I want to thank the unsung heroes tonight. These individuals, this film does not exist without them. And I'm talking about the Bell Media archivists. I believe they're here tonight. West, and they're often the unsung heroes, but in my opinion, they have the most important job in this entire building, preserving this part of Canadian history. So thank you for allowing me into your home, being the first filmmaker to have this opportunity. I didn't take it lightly. I'm told Heather Middleton is here tonight. I told you I said hi, Heather. Now, Heather here has worked in the Much Music Archives for 33 years. We didn't get to work together on this project where she retired. Now, when Heather left the building, she was met with a lot of fear and a lot of worry because those archives on the shelf were not digitized. And they have genuine shelf life, meaning if the right resources not put forward and the money's not put up, those archives will expire and erase forever. So Heather, I'm here to let you know, because of the success of this film, because of the media attention we've got, and because the people have bought tickets and have shown their support, Bell Media is putting the necessary funding to digitize the entire library of Bell. They offered me a podium and I said, no, I'm paying for all this square footage, so I'm going to utilize it. Um, my composer, Thomas Caffey, he composed my last film, The Carter Effect. And now Thomas, when I sent him the rough cut of 299 Queen Street West, he had just gotten off The Last Dance, composing the Michael Jordan Netflix series. I believe he was at home polishing his Emmy when I called him. And when he saw this film, he said something interesting. You see, Thomas grew up in America watching MTV. And he told me, of course you have these iconic, legendary musicians, but I've never seen them like this. I've never seen them be real, authentic, genuine human beings. And that's a reflection of the individuals who interviewed them, who were real, authentic, genuine human beings. I appreciate you coming us for living in your studio. I know that's a rarity. My last thank you before we get to the film, my producing partner, where is she? Love of my life, producing <laughs> partner in crime, Molly Yap. You see, you see, Molly grew up far removed from the Much Music experience. She grew up not really understanding it and hearing so much for six years how I was passionate about making it. So one fateful night, Molly jumped on YouTube and she typed in Much Music 80s and 90s and she got lost in a magical rabbit hole. <laughs> and she did. And the next morning she turned to me and she said, we have to make this film. We have to bring it to life. So Molly, thank you for believing in me. Thank you for believing in the film. And most importantly, thank you for allowing us to put up our home to finance it. True story. Don Julio, my major sponsor, let me drop the building in Roy Thompson Hall tonight, which is pretty cool. I appreciate you. <laughs> We had a very small team. I didn't have a marketing budget, but somehow we pulled this off. Eric Alper, Brian Drukarsh, Brian Goldstein. We sold out Roy Thompson Hall. <laughs> Stick around after the film. I'm going to be bringing on the stars of the movie. Tonight I have eight iconic Much Music VJs here tonight. <laughs> Like everybody in Canada, the first time seeing this film, it's their first time too. It's pretty special. They're going to be up with fresh opinions of what they just saw. And most importantly, they're going to do what they've done best, which is take questions from the audience. And this time, they're going to be on the other side of things. So, enjoy the film. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.